Hey guys, what's going on? It's another uh, YouTube video. Uh, Odin God 12 and Kingdom Come 180. And we're here to profile a new deck, actually, that um, I actually well, brought uh, back to life. Kind of spent time bringing back to life. It's called the Crystal Beasts, if you guys don't know. Um, and what's going on? Oh my god, we get to see a deck profile Crystal Beasts. Finally, not something that's current. Something original. Something or just, you know, something back back from way back when. Yeah, pretty much. Um, um, I'm kind of still tweaking this deck. I kind of yet have to uh, build an extra deck for it. Yeah, play that um, I it, I so. Build an extra deck and a side deck for it. But see, the thing is, though, from what it looks like, it's actually coming together quite nicely. I plan on tweaking it a little bit more just to make it more consistent. All right, now let's see the cards here. All right, all right. First off, we're going to run three of our nice... Uh, Crystal Beast, Sapphire Pegasus. What he pretty much does is he sends a Crystal Beast from your deck. Uh, what is it? Deck, Hand, or Graveyard? Something like that. Uh, something like that. And um, he puts it in your Spell and Trap card zone. Dude, I'm drunk. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to read that small for the fucking Yeah, he pretty right much now. puts a Crystal Beast in your Spell and Trap card zone and uh, <laughs> kind of gives you the one-up for Rainbow Dragon. Yeah. Um, so... He and also he's pretty nice, uh, pretty nice beater for eighteen hundred, and we run three of these because he's pretty much your searcher. All right. So he's pretty good. Um, you awesome. have three of your your uh, bring outs. You have um, Ruby Carbuncle. If she special summon, you know you bring any crystal beasts that are in your spell and trap card zone, and you bring them out to the field. Why does it look like a fucking Eevee? Um, it's a fucking Pokemon for crying out It's a fucking Eevee or Espeon. What the fuck is? <laughs> hey, who knows? Before your eyes, it might evolve. But see, the thing oh is, my God. Though, <laughs> see, the thing is, though, evolve. Um, <laughs> is it later <laughs> day? Is it Umbreon or Espeon? I don't know. I need a Moonstone. I don't know. It kind of looks more of like an Espeon. But see, um, with yeah. Ruby Carbuncle, like I said, you can bring back your uh, Crystal Beast from the spell, spell and Trap Card Zone. However many you put, you can special summon as many as possible. Uh, it's also, a mystical, shiny Eevee. I don't yes, know. and they're all supers, so yeah. it's actually pretty nice and shiny. Yeah. Um, shiny. Also, Eevee. if you bring them out, if you bring her out with a spell card and put her in the spell, uh, spell and Trap Card Zone, it's technically special summoning her. So when you special summon her, she'll bring she'll bring your forces out too. So it's actually pretty good. It's kind of like get put this to get rid of everything. Put it in your spell trap card zone. You think you're locked? It's like Ruby Carbuncle. Have fun. Exactly. Um, we have our guardian of the deck. We have Rib uh, Amber Mammoth. Any Crystal Beast monster that you control that would be a, uh, selected as an attack target, it automatically goes to him. So pretty much you have to get through him in order to get through your Crystal Beast. Yeah, it's seventeen hundred meter. That's pretty fair. So it starts your weaker uh, beast from getting like run over completely. Exactly. And with the support in this deck, I'm still like I said, I'm still tweaking it. But honestly, I'm honestly thinking about um, kind of trying to find a way to increase his attack points. I gotcha. So it it's still a plus off when you want to get him as your guardian. So, um, and also, when each Crystal Beast is uh, destroyed, you can either send it to your Spell and Trap card zone, or you can just send it to the graveyard. So, um, of those of you who don't know Crystal Beasts, I'm explaining it now. So, um, that's the Amber Mammoth. You have three Topaz Tiger. He's pretty much your beat stick. Um, beat stick. With Topaz Tiger, if you attack with him, uh, he'll gain 400 attack points during the damage step. Um, so, he'll pretty much be a 2,000 beater. Um, if he's destroyed, he'll be a uh, he'll be a little crystal in your spell and trap card zone. He'll be traded as a continuous spell, so it's actually pretty good. Um, good news, it like a diamond. Because I was about to say, I just actually bunch of bunch of rich, uh, bold rich kids actually burnt diamonds. Wait, what? Um, um, actually, like, if they actually made a, a diamond and they ever caught like, a new one called diamond, that I'll, would be awesome. Actually, this is a problem because fire, because what fire does to diamonds. There's a back of the soot. Exactly. Which is like, we can get fire. Uh, Ronald Chris is mostly indestructible, except for a battle, which is we can get fucking fire. <laughs> exactly. A, bo a bunch of little <coughs> rich kids, you stupid fucks, burnt like $20,000 worth of diamonds, you assholes. <laughs> um, Your parents probably killed you after that. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing on with the Crystal Beast, we have two MSS Cat. Amethyst Cat, um, you can pretty much have her attack points to have uh, have her attack your opponent directly. So 600, like, beat her, like, if you do, like, an add-on clip or a booster attack or all that. Yeah, kind of honestly, with this card, I like to get the easy damage in. And then if she's destroyed, she turns into a crystal and puts so, so, so spell and trap uh, In other words, you do this, and then, like, 
you're pushed like for the last little bit towards the end of the game. It's like bam. Yeah, and also I actually did this against one of my friends and uh, locals in Ohio. And they were probably and, pretty and pissed. They were they were they were pretty pissed because I had Rainbow Dragon on the field then. So uh, I'll be more about I will be mad at you too. I'll probably let shut my head. So I'll be like <laughs> fuck you. More on Rainbow Dragon later though. Uh, we have two Cobalt Eagle. He pretty much puts a spell. Uh, one of your Crystal Beasts. Um, one of your right. Crystal Beasts in your uh, that you control, and he puts it back to the top of your deck so that you can use it for uh, for later. So pretty much, um, you can like target Sapphire Pegasus or Ruby Carbuncle. Yeah. Anything like that, or the Guardian. Uh, so whatever it is on your field, back row, front row, they can probably do that, right? A, um. Yeah, pretty much, because it's technically a crystal beast that you control. Yeah. So, and technically, those monsters are becoming spell and trap cards, or, or uh, continuous spells. So, pretty much, you still control those crystal beasts. So, you can send them to the back, uh, to the top of your deck to draw from. Very nice, very nice, all right. Um, and also, he turns into a crystal if he's destroyed, too, so it's all good. Um, you run two Emerald Turtle, pretty good for defense. Um, also, you can change a monster's battle position. Um... You can target one monster you control and then uh, change the battle position, you know, in case you want to uh, build up your defenses. So it's going to like swing with like Amber Mamp or something or, or your, your, your Topaz Tiger and then put it in defense so that way in case they come back with something else, they don't turn over your light points. Exactly. a little bit low. Exactly. So Emerald Turtle is really good to have in this deck, especially if you want to keep up your defenses. Um, for this deck, I run um, three of the boss monsters. You have three of uh, Rainbow Dragon. I um, actually um, dropped the two that are on something else. Yeah, I honestly think I'm going to drop the third one for uh, Malefic Rainbow Dragon. And that would actually be pretty nice. Yes, it really would. Because the thing is, you have your field spell, the Ancient Rainbow Ruins. So, um, with this guy, he pretty much is special summon if you have seven Crystal Beasts with different names from your field or from your graveyard. So, uh, if you have him in your hand, you can instantly special summon him, uh, him from your hand. And he has two effects. Either you can um, send all Crystal Beast monsters you control to the graveyard. He'll gain a thousand for each. Or you can pretty much, what is it, banish? Um, you can banish all Crystal Beast monsters in your graveyard to shuffle all cards uh, on the field back into the deck. So Dude, it's, it's, kind of like a, it's kind of like a fuck you video problem. Exactly. And the thing is, so I actually like brain. to push Rainbow Dragon for game. Um, or maybe bring it's him out. It's a 4,000 meter, so that's actually like, less legitimate. It's like it's really Exactly. And also, man. if your opponent has nothing, that's where you can push for game, and you can send all those Crystal Beast monsters to do that um, extra damage. Yeah. So it's actually pretty good. Um, and also, we're going to run uh, Heavy two... Heavy is no longer in play, people, and currently from the ban list, so therefore it is not hurting the back row that much. They'll ever see one or two of your Crystal Beasts for fun. It's going like... Okay, that's, that's <laughs> neat. You just wasted your MSTs. Let me do okay. some other shit with that. We're going to go way back to GX to where the Sacred Beasts were brought out. Um, a reincarnation of the Winged Dragon of Ra. We run two of the Haman Lord of Striking Thunder. I was wondering when I was going to do that again. Yes, Haman Striking Thunder is really good in this deck because you send three continuous spells to the graveyard, and a.k.a. Crystal. your Crystal Beasts. Yes. Um, you can bring him out easy, and plus it also brings out targets to your graveyard if you want to bring out Rainbow Dragon. Um, also, if he destroys a monster as a result of battle, uh, it inflicts an instant... 1,000 points of damage for each uh, for the monster that you just uh, that you destroy with him. So even though they're defending, they're still going to take damage. Exactly. And also... Unless um, they fucking watch will always have ends. And also with uh, Haman, while he's in face-up defense, uh, you can... Or no, or your opponent can't target any other monsters for attacks. So, so it's pretty have, good you if you to, want... Yeah, if you were to come up with 4,000 meters. Exactly. They have to come up with 4,000 points of damage to get over him. So it's really good. Which is kind of why I run the press up with the violent prison with my last video. Exactly. So pretty much you pretty like you pretty much have to go ball steep in order to get rid of Hamon. Um, so that's it for the monsters. I have really a lot of spells in this deck, and pardon me, like if it takes too long for this. Let's have a spell counselor. <laughs> we, have, we have three ancient uh, ancient city rainbow ruins. This is really good uh, if you want to bring out. Um, Say Malefic Rainbow Dragon if you run it for those Crystal Be Crystal Beast players. Um, if you have Rainbow Dragon in your deck, you just banish banish it from your deck. If you have Rainbow Dragon or Malefic Rainbow Dragon in your hand, and then you can special summon it from your hand. 
Um, with Rainbow, uh, Rainbow Ruins, for those of you who, who don't know what it does, I'm going to go ahead and read the effect to you. Um, you must um, have this many Crystal Beast monsters in your spell and trap card zone to activate and resolve these effects. One plus, it can't be uh, this card can't be destroyed with card effects, which is actually pretty good because it's kind of like a... Um, Kind of like a field barrier. Yeah. Um, two plus, you can once per turn half the battle damage that you take, which is really good if you want to kind of keep keep in the game. Yeah. Um, three plus, when a spell and trap card is activated, you can send one crystal beast monster you control to the graveyard to negate the activation and destroy it. So pretty much, if you even control a, sp a spell and trap card kind of uh, continuous uh, for the spell and trap card zone for the crystal beast, yeah. you can just instantly just send it to the graveyard and you can negate it. Oh, cool. um, or from the field. Whee! Four plus, you can once per turn, one, uh, during your main phase, you can draw one card. And five plus, you can once per turn, during your main phase, target one Crystal Beast monster in your spell and trap card zone and special summon a target. So basically saying, if you want if you want Ruby Carbuncle, if she's in your spell and trap card zone, you can bring her out and then you can special summon all your other Crystal Beasts. So it's pretty good if you want to get your re reinforcements out. Yeah. <laughs> Also, continuing on, we, have, we run three Beacon. Uh, the Beacon, you can special summon one Crystal Beast monster from your deck, and then you must have two or more Crystal Beast monsters in your Spell and, tra uh, spell and Trap card zone to resolve this effect. Which so, really isn't hard to know Crystal Beast. It's really not hard to do when it comes to Crystal Beast, because you're just instantly sending them to the Spell and Trap card zone. And you honestly you know, want to pull off quick plays like Haman or like Rainbow Dragon, yeah, stuff really. like that. So it's really good. Um, we run two of the crystal bl uh, crystal blessing, crystal blessing. I'm actually thinking about bumping up the three, but right now I'm going to keep it at two. Uh, you can target up to two or uh, two or more. Uh, yeah, target up to two crystal beast monsters in your graveyard, and then you can place those targets face up in your spell and trap card zone um, as continuous spell cards. So pretty much, you're technically still controlling crystal beast monsters to to kind of resolve the effects. Yeah. For those you know uh, cards that say you know send a crystal beast monster you control so technically you're still controlling a crystal beast monster all right <coughs> crystal abundance i run two um here's why because you can send four crystal beast monster uh cards so shiny oh yes, my god and they're, they're both crystals too. It's just like oh my god yay yeah you can send four crystal beast cards uh from your uh spell and trap card zone to the graveyard, send all cards on the field to the graveyard, and then special summon as many Crystal Beast monsters as possible from your graveyard up to the number of cards your opponent uh, controlled that were sent to the graveyard by so, this card's I mean, effect. So they control three or more. It's so like pretty much, it pretty much descends on. Uh, it pretty much depends on how many Crystal Beasts you send. So it's kind of like a fuck you to your opponent like once again. Exactly. Like you have so that on the field. I'm gonna get rid of you it. You have to pay the requirement of four. So you send those four crystal beast monsters to, from the spell. My question zone. is, if they negate it because of special summoning at the end of the effect, can they, they can do it. Yet? They can do it with solemn warning. They can do it with solemn warning because this pretty much technically special summons cards. So with those of you who run solemn warning, you can get over this card. But see, the thing is, um, if you don't, then it's pretty much a problem for you. Like, if you want to bring out the reinforcements for those of you who run the crystal beasts. So, um, so, I mean, I mean, the, really what you're going, the world depends on what the Crystal Beasts are going up against, and then Glad's are not my favorite thing to go up against. Yeah. Then again, if you go up against something like, say, um, I don't know, say Gyugi, I mean, Gyugi might have a little bit of trouble with uh, Crystal Beasts. Yeah, it honestly depends on how many, honestly, when it, when it comes to Gyugias, you honestly have to kind of, uh, Keep up with the pace with Gyrgyz because and Crystal Beast like if you're, you're, if they're just getting knocked back is really not yes. Effective. If you are a Gyrgya player, you're pretty much good with this deck. And honestly, with Crystal Beast players out there, you have to keep up with Gyrgyz because they mass special summon. So what you want to do is you want to counter it, you know, card for card. You want to give them those problems. Um, really hopefully, awesome. with the next few cards I explain, um, it'll kind of help out um, in a way. But just, um, like I said, subscribe, you know, kind of give us the points and tips and stuff like that. Um, continuing on, we run three equip cards. I'm actually thinking about running Hidden Armory in this card, or in this deck. That would actually work really well. Because Crystal Release here, um, you can equip it only to a Crystal Beast monster, and it'll gain 800 attack points. Um, also, um, if it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can place a Crystal Beast monster from your deck and fa uh, place it face up in the spell and trap card zone. So it kind of gives you, kind of gives you a plus. I don't play Hidden Armory at least one or two of it. 
I would at least run one. Yeah, I mean, one in or my two. opinion. Yeah, just one or two. Um, so this is really good if you want to recycle and kind of get your plus outs with this right here. So yeah. honestly, I'm honestly thinking about probably cutting one and then putting it, uh, putting the armory in there. I didn't actually cut something else out, which we'll added him in armor just to get that plus one. In yeah, there. probably. So that's crystal release. Um, that's just what I would do. Yeah, Good. I run one crystal promise. Crystal promise. It's pretty much kind of um, a special summon, kind of like a monster reborn. Um, you can select a crystal beast monster in your spell and trap card zone and special summon Shiny. it to the field. And if you want to do it with Ruby Carbuncle, get all those reinforcements out. Um, or if you want to do Sapphire Pegasus, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Sapphire Pegasus, it still works if you special summon. You just kind of put that extra Crystal Beast in the spell and trap card zone. That's pretty good. Um, I run one rare value for now. I'm actually thinking about bumping it to two. Um, I gave you the other two, right? That you did it? Yeah, you did. Um, if there are two or more face up Crystal Beasts in your spell and trap card zone, your opponent chooses which one they send, and then you get to draw one card. So pretty much, they send it to the graveyard, you get, it's pretty much like a pot of greed, kind of. Yeah. Except it pays for a cost when your opponent has to choose which one from the spell and trap cards out. And it's also like, it's also kind of like, if you want to add a pot to hours as well, you could probably do that too. That too. Um... So you have real powers and then pop into alley. This is what extra a lot of extra power. Um, if you really want to go for that, yeah. Going into more, balance. going into more equip cards. I run one mage power. Mage power, you oh pretty much God. boost <laughs> the hell out of your crystal beast monsters or a rainbow dragon. That's like a fuck yeah. Exactly, because you have your crystal beast monsters in your spell and trap cards zone if they're destroyed, and they count as spells. So pretty much, you kind of meet the requirements of this card. And it kind of boosts your monsters up, so that's pretty good. Um, we run one Burden of the Mighty. Burden of the Mighty, I'm actually considering taking out because honestly, it's not really. Actually, good actually, it's really good for initially. It's not a game like stopping them from good, running see, you over at all. But see, the thing is, when it comes to running this card, it's the XCs that make it. The, it's the XCs that make it the problem. Yeah, the XCs are. Yeah, but they force you have to make them. You have to force them to make your XCs to get over that. Exactly. That's, that's why. That's my whole thing. With, with the way I play is, if I force my opponent to play this, the only way to get around this is to play this. Then, if I expect this, I don't have to play around that one strategy. That's why I usually play my decks. There you go. Yeah. That's why I built like like a stealth. So that's Burden of the Mighty. Burden of the Mighty. Pretty much each face up monster your opponent controls, uh, it loses a hundred attack for each uh, of their Level. levels. Yeah. So uh, it's actually it's a really good. Make a burden of uh, like something else and then go like for ranks. Exactly. It's really sure because the XYZ is just the only way around anything. Right um, now. we want we run um one swords of revealing light, but I'm honestly thinking. Ooh, think, very nice. Yeah, it's ultra rare. Ultra um, I'm honestly rare. thinking about taking it out. Because honestly, I think I can probably tweak it in something more. But I would actually, I would actually take that out. Maybe magic cylinder for fun. Probably something like that. Uh, just something kind of easy to, you know, something like an out or something like that. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Of course, I everybody knows. Everybody knows from the first generation what swords does. It's, it's, it's just if you don't, really if you, good if you want to solve. If you were born way too late, and you're not a '90s child, get the fuck out. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But no, <laughs> I mean, actually, I'll call you a Uh, we run two of the hand destruction. You can send two cards from the graveyard to draw two cards. Second, or, from the hand to the yeah, graveyard. from the hand to the graveyard, sorry. To draw two um, more cards. Yeah, each player sends two cards from their hand to the graveyard to draw two more cards. So, it... It's kind of disruptive to your opponent if they have to win hand. Exactly. It, it, it kind of gives them a choice if they really need something, you know, and, you know, they have nothing but, like, what, two cards, and, you know, they have to get rid of them. You know, yeah. it kind of gives you that kind of confidence you know, saying, what? like, hey, I can do this. So... And also, it gives you the targets to put those crystal beasts in the graveyard, too. Yep. Um, we run 2 MST. 2 MST, I'm actually thinking about probably bumping up to 1 or maybe making it a side deck. Uh, making, the, of course, the 1 the side deck. Um, Self-explanatory for MST. And the last of the spells, we run Dark Hole. Self-explanatory. Because you can do that to your own... Um, can you do that to your own... Um Crystal Beast Monsters. And then put them back in the zone. Yes, you can. If and honestly, and really it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Really become Uncle and pull them back up. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, with with uh, Crystal Beast players out there, if you are still out there, um, with Dark Hole, if you have your Crystal Beast Monsters on the field and you pull out Dark Hole, um, you can 
Stop that. <laughs> you can use the Dark Hole to put those Crystal Beast monsters back to your spell and trap card zone if they are destroyed. So that's actually pretty good. Um, and I actually run four traps in this deck. Um, I'm still tweaking it, like I said. So probably by the end of the time, uh, by the end of the time I actually end up finishing this deck, it'll actually have more trap cards. So we have your one up, we have your bottomless trap hole, and you have your uh, torrential tribute. Where's the compulse? We don't know yet. So yeah, I was still kind of why would you want compulse? Because now that kind of back, if you do it to yourself, it kind of backfires on you a little bit. Yeah, if you don't run compulse. I don't know. I'm kind of just kind of basing this I, I wasn't wrong in there yet. And honestly, you haven't, you haven't set up I'm going to kind of bring up the past a little bit off topic. This was actually my ex-girlfriend's deck. I'm kind of still tweaking it a little bit as my own deck. So, yeah. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> don't look at me like that. Um, I'm like, what? This, this was my ex-girlfriend's deck. I tried to kind of when I okay, was still... Okay, I'm going to feel sad for you now. I was... Still kind of trying to, to tweak the deck out for her and kind of making it work. But see, the thing is, though, it kind of didn't really work out between us. So I have the deck now. and um, It's well, not officially his. Well, it, it's, it, it is it officially my deck now because the thing is, most of my cards are in here. Yeah. So, so. honestly, it works. Um, you have Mirror Force, run one. Uh, it's going to be two sooner or later. Uh, and then one negate attack. Um, Ooh, very nice to get Yeah, one negated one. tag is actually pretty good. Um, I actually want to get one. I'm actually thinking off. about actually keeping this in there. I actually um, want to get one so I can run in glad these. That would be very nice. That would be really nice. Um, but yeah, that's actually you know what I have so far, the Crystal Beasts. Um, like I said, for those Crystal Beast players out there, um, I really you know kind of appreciate the tips or comments you have on the video. Um, just kind of let me know. This is uh, Odin God Twelve, and also, of course, my buddy Kingdom Come One Eighty. Yep. So, um, like I said, comment, subscribe, like, whichever one you want. Um, just kind of give us pointers of what you want to do with this deck, and uh, you know, I'll kind of take it into consideration. If you can draw your shit on this map, I'll give you a freaking dollar. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, seriously, I, mean, I really want to have you. But yeah, draw that is that. the deck of the Crystal Beast so far. I'm pretty sure I will update it here soon. Um, just kind of. Uh, Watch him do the stuff with his cards. It's so, he's doing it so quick. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, he's not doing it, damn it. So, so yeah. that's the end of the Crystal Beast video. Peace, YouTube. Love you guys.